Hello guys, in this video I want to show you the built-in X server on Windows. In my previous videos I always assumed that Windows doesn't have an X server built-in, so I always used a third-party tool. Every time I started a GUI application inside of a Docker container, there was always a third-party X server running in the background that was displaying the GUI. Now if you want to know how to run Windows and Linux applications inside of a Docker container, the link is up there or down in the description. This time we will not use a third-party X server, we will use the built-in X server on Windows. All the necessary links are down in the description as well as the timestamp so you can skip any part of this video. The X server on Windows was introduced with this WSL update, also known as WSLG, G stands for GUI, and with this one you are able to run Linux GUI applications inside WSL, inside Windows. And those GUI applications are displayed, you guessed it, using an X server. In addition, you don't get only GUI, you also get audio. So this one also brings a Pulse audio server with it. In a previous video I showed you how you can play audio inside of a Docker container using a third-party Pulse audio server that was installed on Windows. The link to the video is up there or down in the description. With this WSL update, you don't need a third-party Pulse audio server anymore. So now when we run applications inside of a Docker container, we can use the built-in Windows X server and the Pulse Audio server to display the GUI and to play audio. I hope you are excited as I am because the built-in X server is so well integrated into Windows that the performance difference compared to the third-party X server is huge, as you will see in this video. You will need to have Windows 11, this build in particular or later, and you will need to install WSL together with the Ubuntu distribution. In this video I will assume that you already went through this page and installed all the needed dependencies so you have a working WSL distribution. This video will focus how to use the built-in X server and the built-in Pulse Audio server. Once WSL is set up and running you can find the X server. In your file explorer you will find Linux and Ubuntu, so this is your Ubuntu distribution installed in WSL. And in there, under mount, you will find WSLG. And inside here everything we need is already mounted. Pool server is here, the runtime directory, the .x11-unix is here. Everything inside is already prepared to be used. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's see how we can use the built-in X server and the built-in Pulse Audio server. So here we are in Visual Studio Code and I have prepared a very small Docker file. It's Alpine based, so it should be very lightweight. This one should run just a simple file browser inside of a Docker container. And then once we are inside, we will play some video files inside of the container. Here I'm just installing PCMan.fm. This is a very simple file browser. Then I'm installing FFmpeg. We will use this one to play the video files. And then installing some basic fonts and just some icon theme. Those two are needed because this is a very lightweight image, otherwise we will not have anything to display. Then I'm setting the display environment variable to zero. As you can see, I'm not specifying where the X server is, so it will try to search on the default location. We will see where that is. And then I need audio, so I'm setting the pulse server environment variable to slash temp slash pulse server. So we will need to make sure that the pulse server is at the right location. And then I'm just starting PCMan.fm, the simple file browser. And that's it. Let's build this image, go to Terminal, New Terminal. Make sure you're in the right folder and write docker build-f, the name of the docker file. In my case, this is docker file-video and dash t, the name of the image. I'll call it docker-video and a dot for the current folder and enter build. Image is ready. Here it is in Docker Desktop, it has 165 megabytes. And now let's run this one. Go to Run, and in here, here we need to specify the path where the X server and the Pulse Audio server are located. We know where that is, WSLG. It's in here as I showed you previously. So just take this path, copy it, and just paste the path in here. And we want to map this one to the slash temp folder. So this will map the WSLG folder to the temp folder. And you guessed it, this is the default path where Linux will search for the X server. And we also specified that Pulse Audio is inside there. So we should be good to go. There is also another folder that I want to map. This one here in Visual Studio Code. So let's add this one as well. Click on the plus sign. This one. This is the one. You can also see it down here. Alright. And I want to map this one to slash app. 
Now this folder will be mapped to the slash app folder inside of the container, so we will be able to play those video files. Alright, let's try it out. Run. And here it is, PCMan FM. So this one is running inside of the Docker container and it is displayed on Windows using the built-in X server. If you are running this for the first time and WSL is not yet up and running, it will take a bit for WSL to set everything up, but eventually you will get this window, so be patient. So let's check the temp folder first. Let's also show the hidden files. And yes, as you can see, everything is mapped properly. Here is pool server, runtime directory, and the .x11-unix folder. Of course, everything is mapped. That's why we are seeing a window. So now we are sure that the X server is running because we have a window. Let's see if audio is working. So let's go to the other mapped folder, to the slash app folder. Here I have a few video files. Let's try to play this one. It doesn't know how to open this one, but we have a command for it. FF play this one. Let's play this one and let's see if we get video and audio. Okay. Hello guys, in this video I want to show you the differences between RDP and VNC, including the performance differences. Yes, it works. This one is playing inside of a Docker container and it is displayed on Windows. And also we get the audio on Windows. Let's try to fast forward a bit. As if you are on the real so, machine, the VNC yeah. image quality should be worse. FF Play is one of FFmpeg tools, a very lightweight video player, and I'm using it here just to play this video. This is one of my previous videos where I compare RDP and VNC performance, so if you're interested, the link to the video is up there or down in the description. Let's close this now, and also let's close the browser. Alright, container has stopped. Now let's compare the performance between the built-in X server on Windows and a third-party X server that is installed on Windows. In my case, this is VCX serve. The download link is in the description. For the comparison, I have another Docker file, which I took from a previous video and by the name Docker file Firefox, you can guess we will use Firefox to compare the performance. In a previous video, I compared four web browsers where each was running in its own container. Firefox was one of those. So if you're interested how to run different web browsers in a container, the video link is up there or down in the description. Let's build this image first. Write docker build-f, the name of the docker file. In my case, this is docker file-firefox. Then dash t, the name of the image, docker firefox. And a dot for the current folder and enter build. Image is ready. Here it is in Docker desktop with 343 megabytes. Now let's start two containers. The first one will use the third party X server, VCX serve, and the second one will use the built in X server. We will not start it here in Docker desktop, but in Visual Studio Code, PowerShell. First, I will start the third party X server, VCX serve, and I will copy the command over, paste. This is it. Enter. Now VCX serve is running. Let's start the container now. Write docker run dash d because we want to start in a detached mode because we will need the terminal also for the second one. Then I will override the display environment variable to host dot docker dot terminal colon zero. This will be resolved to the IP address of my host system where the VCX serve X server is running. So this one will use VCX serve. Then dash t the name of the image docker firefox. And the command we want to start, we want to start Firefox. And start, enter. Here it is, as you can see it's building up. Alright, now this one is running inside of the first container and it is displayed using the third party X server. Let's dock this to the right. And now let's start the second container. Docker run dash D. Here we need to map the folder. I will copy the path to the built in X server from my cheat sheet. Paste. This is the same path that we mapped previously. Now a colon and we want to map it to the slash tmp folder. Then dash t, the name of the image, docker firefox. And we want to start firefox. Let's start this one, enter. Here it is. Probably you already noticed how fluent this one was. Now let's bring this one to the left, like that. So we have two containers running Firefox. The left one is displayed using the built-in X server and the right one is displayed using the third-party X server. Now let's open YouTube. I will paste the link here and enter and paste the link here. We can see how this one is building up. You can probably tell that this one is taking way longer. First, let's try to scroll around the page. This is the built-in. Very fluent. No problems here. 
Let's try the third party. It's very slowly building up, not fluent at all, but it is how it is. Let's try to play a video. Let's try this one. Let's see the built in. So, as you can see, very fluent, even here. So, this works without any issues. As if this one is running on Windows and not in a Docker container. Very fluent. I can also scroll around, no problem. Still working. Now let's try the third party X server. Paste. And let's see. So this one is really lagging behind. Not fluent at all. Yeah, and the quality is not great at all. Probably I can stop this. The built in X server is the clear winner here, no doubt. Obviously, it's well integrated into Windows and it just performs flawlessly. And to be honest, for the third party X server, Firefox is an overkill. While I was recording, it crashed on me three times. So I had to record this over and over just to get what you can see here. The conclusion is if you're using WSL, then use this built in X server instead of this third party one. Let's close this one. It suffered enough. The video I was showing you is a game I made a few years ago by the name Snappy Mouse Run. It's a mobile game and you can find more information about it and also the link down in the description. And that's it for this video. You can find the Docker files down in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, if you like my content, give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me. I very appreciate it. It makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.